Up next, we do have another speaker who is ready to go backstage here. Her name is Shandana Marisetti, and she is going to be talking to us about accelerating healthcare through the power of data and technology. Shandana, welcome to the stage. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the time. Of course, thank you for being with us. Now, I'm gonna tell everyone a little bit more about you here. So you are a leader and thought partner on leveraging analytics and technology to push the boundaries of pharma offerings to healthcare, which is exciting because a little bit earlier today, we had a medical healthcare advancements talk and here on the main stage, and many of the audience were very excited to hear about that and kind of how this medical technology and health technology ties into the world that we're all living in. We all know someone who needs access to this. We ourselves will. And so I think it's a really exciting thing to be to be sharing with us. So we are very happy to have you here with us today. And I will give the stage to you. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, hoping people can see the slides. Perfect. So maybe before we go into the slides, a little bit of introduction about myself. Uh, I know all of you have been having a wealth of technology talks in these two days. And as a first time participant of this community and the summit, I wanted to thank you first for coming to listen to me and giving me the opportunity to share my perspectives of healthcare data and where technology is helping shape how this data can be leveraged for better health outcomes for you and for me. Um, as I just got introduced, my name is Chandana. I'm a partner at ZS Associates. It's a consulting firm which has shaped almost its entire 30 years of journey just driven by its passion for healthcare, life science firms, and how we can help different players in this ecosystem make more data-driven decisions. Optimizing healthcare benefits and spend continues to be a top of mind concern for almost every country in the world right now, including all of us. And we all know how big some of those healthcare bills can be when we fall sick. So while we tap into that existing ecosystem for our needs, we all know that we are left with a certain amount of discontent, that the treatment is not really personalized for you, neither is it efficient. How many of us had a doctor visit and felt that lack of personal touch? You know, does this doctor really understand how I live my life, my ways of living, uh, what I like to eat, my different kinds of bodies and what my personal preferences are? And we are left wondering why healthcare, where billions of dollars are spent each year, is unable to anticipate our need while our smart devices at home can guess that I want a vacation even before I ask for it. So based on ZS research with both patients and doctors on connected care, and we've done this research almost a year and a half ago across 5,000 to 6,000 different participants. And what we understood was people, people like you and me who patients are half as likely to feel cared for than our doctors think. The doctors feel like they've done given everything that they need. Be, but we usually come back with that feeling of something's missing. I don't feel like I'm cared enough. And there is a desire for greater coordination of care. Focus on long-term health, not just solving that immediate sickness that I have. Better preventative care, not just curing the illness, but how do we focus more on wellness? And overall, easier access to health care anytime and anywhere. We all know that buying something on Amazon is much easier than finding that one appointment with our doctor that we need and when we need it. So digitization with the advent of better data and more advanced technologies, especially with the kind of technologies that we're all talking about in the past few years, has potential to fundamentally change healthcare in many ways. One, Empowering patients like you and me via APIs, apps, AI, and smartphones that drive awareness and engagement. It also drives healthy behavior. There's an entire wellness industry that is emerging right now, such as Headspace for meditation and mental health. There's Noom for gamifying group support on weight loss. We know a zillion fitness apps right now there for step tracking. And I'm sure each one of us 
have our personal favorites during the pandemic. This also leads to a higher level of prevention or wellness care, where the role of the doctor is shifting from just treating illness to actually encouraging wellness, which is what we all want. In addition, we're also seeing a big improvement in how technology is being used to decentralize diagnosis. We don't always have to go to those big test centers to figure out what's going on. Even complicated things like colon cancer can actually be screened from samples taken at home. There are now apps that are being developed, which through your skin blemishes can help you understand saying, is this something that I need to be worried about or is this normal? Technology is also driving better therapy with increased application of precision medicine. It's not just about like a one size fits all. There are very, very targeted therapies that are being created and not just through clinical trials. It's actually through meta analysis of outcomes data, real world patient data and applicable to a very diverse population. In fact, one of the things that has often been the mistakes of clinical trials is it goes after a certain population, but that population is not always representative of the actual disease that the therapy is targeted for in terms of the race, the gender, sometimes the kind of countries, and even sometimes the kind of economical and social background that people in that disease deal with. And all of this inclusion of technology within healthcare is leading to us living in a very engaged way. Engaged in the sense where we, of course, know AI is a very hot term right now in technology, but AI is becoming a very hot term even in healthcare, where AI assistants are being used to remind folks to take medicines, telehealth keeping us engaged while baking in our social and environmental determinants of health as part of the therapy. But for all of this to happen, we need the data and the connection. And there's a term called Pleco system. I don't know if many of you have heard of Pleco system, but Pleco system is where you know many platforms are being linked together to form a whole data ecosystem that can help healthcare get access to data surrounding all aspects of your life. So traditionally, EMR companies like elect electronic medical record companies were the platform owners with the ownership of all of your medical data through by just by managing your medical records. And tech players were the owners of the non-healthcare data like Facebook with social and multimedia platforms. However, we've now reached a crossroad where these platforms are starting to link together through APIs. A classic example, which we all know of, is the Google Maps API that links location data with social and multimedia. And imagine the how such APIs could work if they were connecting your medical data with your social data and your environmental data to give that holistic picture to your physicians. A good example that we all use every day, but we don't realize is the union of Apple's various healthcare specific platforms. I'm sure many of us adorn the Apple Watch. This is Apple's data generation platform. The watch collects patients, that is your and my physical activity, with additional lifestyle factors to come, such as sleep monitoring. And when that happens, this is being used by pharma companies to facilitate clinical trials in conjugation with research companies and care companies. Even payers and developers are being developers like all of us are being attracted to this platform as a means to better assess patient risk and influence their behavior, their wellness behavior by developing new apps to attract them. Apple Health Records is another one. This is another two sided platform in which Apple connects patients with doctors. Patients gain value in being able to unify their health record with their Apple Watch data and take this to any doctor they want. And the doctors gain value in that the watch, lo watch lowers the hurdle for them to acquire patients and grant access to massive amounts of health data, which today exists in 
multiple different systems and smaller systems that they can never get a holistic picture of the patient's behavior or lifestyle data. But with the integration of Apple Watch, that hurdle has become much, much easier for many. And third, Research Kit and Care Kit. This platform is actually specifically focused towards pharma, clinical trial leads, and patients. It serves as a way to connect researchers to develop applications to monitor trials, and at the same time, recruit patients who are in most need of the clinical trial therapy by linking them to the clinical trials of interest. I've said this even in my uh, outline, like, Data is growing exponentially within healthcare, but it's doubling literally every couple of months with its volume growing faster than any other industry. 36 percent CAGR is what we talk about when we talk about healthcare data. And we are talking about all types of data that can be collected uh, about us, particularly data outside the medical system. When many of the times we say healthcare data, a lot of people are like, it's all the data that usually is entered by uh, about us in the hospitals and the clinics. But healthcare data, when we talk about it, it's actually the data that sits outside the medical system that can influence our health outcomes, particularly our genetic makeup, our physical behaviors through the many health apps, Fitbits, smart wearables we are on our social behavior and conditions, and of course, the ever-changing environment that we're all living in, the cities we live in, the air we breathe, the water we drink. And this data explosion was significantly accelerated in the recent years through the adoption of digital devices, adoption of electronic health records, EHR systems by our hospitals, and declining the cost of gene sequencing from companies like 23andMe and many more. And more than anything else, the evolving openness by us patients on sharing data. Let me actually ask the audience a question. You can feel free to type it in the chat. What percentage of healthcare data do you think is analyzed and used today? Any guesses? Is it 50%, 80%, 20%? Hey, just about 17%. That's right. We are barely scraping the tip of the iceberg when we think about the data that is available to us for us to actually analyze and leverage technologies for. What percentage of data do you think is structured and easy to use? It's only 20%. And which is where technology becomes very, very important to enable us with the tools to leverage that 80% of unstructured data hidden in conversations, images, documents, and much more. Even if you see your doctor typing away at their system when you go visit them, that still goes into only that 17% or 20% of structured data. There's a whole 80% of data about you that is not in those systems. For example, doctors' notes are not are very poorly analyzed for single patients. Forget about a whole uh, cohort of patients. In fact, there was a very interesting study done in UK recently, where they had come to the conclusion of after analyzing nearly five thousand to six thousand patients that you can tell more about a person's depression from their social media posts more than their medical records. And that's the power that this kind of data holds if we are only able to connect it. But what is the biggest challenge that is stopping us from connecting is the data? Before even technology, the biggest challenge is the ability to have interoperability standards. The interoperability across relevant healthcare data which only comes from a reform of the data standards used across the different ecosystems. And that's where we are starting to see a change in the recent years. And that's where governments and laws actually play a big role in enabling that even before technology does. The 21st Century Cures Act allows patients to access their medical data upon request. And as of 2022, that's it this year, it will also allow third parties to access that data through APIs. 
the law is expected to give a rise to a whole ecosystem of healthcare apps that would make some of those medtech apps completely incumbent. This act also addresses potential, many of the time we have those conflicts on confidentiality, what are the sharing barriers, all of that. And the whole act is aimed to address that, to simple consent, consent that you and me as patients can contribute to and can own. There's also something which uh, in our healthcare world we call FIRE. It's a fun term, F-H-A-I-R. It's called Fast Healthcare Interoperability Resources. It's a new web standard that's evolved in the past couple of years that enables healthcare information to be shared electronically between healthcare providers, patients, caregivers, payers, researchers, and others in the healthcare ecosystem. It allows information, including clinical and administrative data, to be available securely to those who have a need to access it and to those who have the right to do so. Big players like Intermountain Healthcare and Partners Healthcare are using Smart on Fire to build and utilize apps that work seamlessly with their systems. And similarly, Apple recently announced that they have integrated data across six electronic healthcare record vendors that allows to users to store verifiable health records. So when I'm moving from a hospital, hospital or a system to system, I don't have to worry about whether everybody has my records because all of those records are in the same standard and can be shared confidentially across the system so that my doctors have all of the information that they need. Even in Europe, where usually the data sharing is a little more constrained than in the US, there are new rules that boost data sharing with the trust and more control for citizens and companies. And to transform this data into the asset that can actually have a big influence in healthcare, coming to our next favorite, there are a whole convergence of new technologies that have happened, such as enterprise data management, operationalizing AI, intelligent automation, all built on cloud foundations and human-centric design. But I'll dive, dive deep into a few noteworthy ones. There is rapid evolution, and sorry for the small font, but I wanted to give you as many examples as you can about this, but I'll talk about a few. There is a rapid evolution in data storage methods and management in healthcare, particularly given the concept that I explained that the data is actually in, not in the typical text mode, and it's actually multimodal in healthcare. And hence, there is a strong need for powerful technologies to enable those connected decisions, like through concepts like data fabric, verifying data, knowledge graphs, graph technologies, and customer data platforms. Across the healthcare value chain, we see these data management solutions having an impact on enabling not just the collection of real world data through mobile apps, but also to leverage the data in a connected way to accelerate drug development, and clinical trials. Intelligent automation is another one where there is ample examples leading to speed and efficiency. It's not just about getting the right drug, but are we able to get the right drug fast enough to serve a wider community of patients who are in need of it? And that's where real world data and using automated automation on that real world data has led to drug target identification and lead compound screening at a much higher success rate to even automating supply chain and inventory controls through digital twins. We've all heard about the COVID surges making headlines, but there were many manufacturing companies which had made rapid innovations using intelligent automation to create digital twins of their manufacturing plants so that they could rapidly figure out what is the amount of medicines and vaccines that they would need to produce. And even more than that, we've also seen automation play a big role in automated wellness coaches and disease-related query assistance. We've all interacted with those telehealth apps during the pandemic. And particularly when our healthcare ecosystem literally crumpled during the pandemic in the past two years, the, those telehealth apps are now here to stay to become commonplace to reduce the overall healthcare costs, not just bring us efficiency. And embedded within these trends are two supporting technology trends where cloud is, of course, 
evolving as a strategic imperative to enable use of such large volumes of data. And last but not least, integration of human-centric design into the overall experience to personalize healthcare delivery for you and for me. I know I had only 20 minutes, so I couldn't cover every technology trend impacted healthcare, but I'm leaving you with my personal take on the most impactful ones. When we think about the healthcare market, just to give you a sense of the numbers, the healthcare global healthcare data analytics market is valued at 75 billion by 2026. And literally everybody from healthcare players to tech companies are fighting for a piece for it. And the one thought that I'd like to leave you with is the places where we have seen companies succeed are the only the ones who are keeping patient choices and experiences at the center of their journey and offerings. Those are the companies that we believe are here to stay and here to influence your and my lives from a healthcare perspective. So thank you. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me. And I'm happy to answer any questions offline on healthcare. It's something which I've been passionate about for the past 15 years I've spent in this industry and something I'd continue to be interested in. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you, Chandana, for being here today. Um, certainly when you're interested in a topic like this, it resonates when you're presenting because um, we could feel that from you. So, so thank you for that. Um, we did have some people in the chat just kind of sharing great insights. Um, you know, some people had questions that I think you could pop in there and yeah. answer if you have a moment. Um, yeah you know, talking about use of social media and things like that, you know, as I was listening to you too, one of the, the pieces that you said really stood out to me, which was that you said when it comes to mental health, um, that we can more likely tell on social media than we can in medical records. And when you say something so like simple like that, and we probably all can think of like people in our lives or, or even just whether we knew them or not, post on social media where you felt like, wow, that, that thing I just read was someone reaching out. But if it's not connected and we're not seeing that data somewhere, there's, yeah. just, there's, there's simple examples like that that you can illustrate that really land, I think, when we're, for the rest of us that are listening that might not have all that insight that, yes. but that really heard you today. Yep. And we see companies leveraging that to plan your shopping patterns. So why can't that be used for actually managing your health care? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's so exciting to see all these changes that are happening. And we see, you know, there's still beautiful comments <laughs> coming in the chat um, about this. So, Shanana, thank you again for being here today. Yep. Um, and I'll stay on for some time to answer some questions. I'd be happy to. Thank Perfect. You. Okay.